Hey guys and welcome back to part 2 of our item inspection series. So this is going to be the final part as well, it's just a very quick two part series. Last time we went over picking up and moving the object and in this one we've now got actually inspecting it so we can rotate the object as well while looking at it. So if I hit play I can show you what this is going to look like, so what we're making today. So you can see I go over to this object, press E, we pick it up, we can then rotate it and look around like so and we can place it back down. And we can do the same with this other one as well, obviously this one's a bit big so you want to scale it down. However you can see we can rotate them perfectly and put them back down again afterwards as well. So this is what we're going to be making today, very simple, very easy code, but it's quite nice as well. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me that's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, and then once we're in here we're going to go straight back to this inspect item code which we made previously, again in the last episode. So mine's under a comment of inspect item. Once you're here, you want to go back to the very, very start and above your interact input action here. What I'm going to do is right click, add a custom event, and I'm going to name this one inspect or stop inspect or anything on those lines, but I'm just going to name it inspect like so. And we want to make sure that we connect this up to our line trace so the same place our interact action mapping is going. And this is so we can then call this from a different blueprint, i.e. our item blueprint. And I'll explain more on that when we get to it. Compile and save that, then minimize this and open up your item blueprint, which for me is content, inspect item, inspectable item parent, and now we want to actually create it so we can interact with this in here. And what I mean by that is enabling and disabling the correct inputs, so we are now controlling this blueprint instead of the character blueprint. So we can right click, add a custom event, naming this one start inspect, and I'm gonna add an input on here and I'm going to name this one inspector or character or anything like that and I'm going to change it to be a pawn object reference like so. Then I'm going to right click and get disable input connecting that into the start inspect there with the target as inspector and player controller as get player controller because once we start inspecting this item we don't want to be controlling the character anymore we want to control this actor instead so we can then also out of disable input get an enable input with the target as self and player controller as get player controller. So we've no longer got input on the character and we've now got input on this item instead. So then what we can also do underneath this is right click and get our interact action mapping again or the same one which you have at the start of your code here. And then what I'm gonna do is select my disable and enable input, control C, control V down here, going into pressed, with the target of disable input as self and the player controller is get player controller and the target of enable input as the inspector from start inspect up there and the player controller is get player controller. So when we stop inspecting it, i.e. we press interact again to put it down, we're going to disable the input in this item and re-enable the input in the character. What we also want to do is make sure we actually put the item down again and that is why we made this inspect or stop inspect custom event here. So after enable input we can cast to our character which for me is the third person character with the object you can have as get player character or even this inspector up here and then as third person character we're going to call function inspect or stop inspect like so. So we can compile and save and that is that basic part done of inspecting and stopping to inspect the item. One final thing for this is if we go back to our character blueprint back in this code we need to go down until we get to this part here. So after the timeline we have the branch of is inspecting, false goes down to placing it back down, true is if we are now inspecting it. So if we're now inspecting it, what we want to do is actually enable that start inspect custom event we just made there, or call it sorry. So out of true, we can cast to inspectable item parent, or whatever you have this blueprint named as, and the object is going to be get item actor here, so we're going to get the item actor, and out of this we're going to get child actor child actor going into the object there because that is then going to enable the inspect on any item that we have. So A is going to allow the cast to work and B is going to be specific to any one we have because obviously we're getting the parent and then going to each child class of that dependent on which item we are looking at via this child actor here. So that should work perfectly. And as inspectable item parent we can call function start inspect or whatever you've named it and the inspector, we can just get a reference to self 
So it's this character which is inspecting it, like so. And we compile and save, and now we've got it set up so we can pick up and inspect and put it back down again. Obviously we can't move it yet, but I'll show you what this looks like. So if we hit play, we can press E, we now can't move the character because we disabled the input, and if we press E again, it's still going to put it down because of this code that we have here. So that is going to work perfectly for us, and what I might do is select this, hit C to comment it, naming this start slash stop inspect like so. Now let's set up the rest of the code for actually moving and rotating the object, which is also very, very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so we have to hold down a button and we have to be moving the mouse. So that's simple. So what we can do is we can right click and get mouse X. And what mouse X is, is it's just simply going to fire this off when we move our mouse. And that's when we move our mouse on the X, so left and right. So when the player's mouse moves left and right, it's going to fire off this action mapping here, which is perfect. So after this, I'm going to hold down B and left click to get a branch connecting down there, because again, I want it to be, we have to be holding down a button. Typically, this is left mouse button or right mouse button. So what I'm going to do is back here, I'm going to right click and get player controller. Out of the return value of this, I'm going to get is input key down and the key I'm going to have as left mouse button. So we can get left mouse button there. And what I might also do is duplicate the is input key there. So control C, control V. The target once again as get player controller and have the bottom one as right mouse button. And then come out of one of these and get an or boolean, connect them up like so. So this means if left mouse button or right mouse button is down, we can then interact because we can plug the or into the branch there like so. So if the player is holding left mouse button or right mouse button, we're going to be able to move and rotate the item perfectly how we want to. So again, just set up those input keys to be whatever you like. So I have minus left and right. You can have just left or just right or choose any one you want. And again, if you don't want to, just plug the return value straight in there like so. And then off of true, what we're going to do is get our item. So get item, which is essentially just my static mesh. And out of that, we can then set relative rotation because we want to rotate it relative to what it is in the blueprint itself. And again, that's going to go into true of the branch because if we are holding down left mouse or right mouse button. And because again, this is going to be firing off whenever we move the mouse. So if we stop holding it down, this is immediately going to go off of false instead because it will automatically be updating. And to actually rotate it, so we figure out how much we want to move it, that's also very simple. What we can do is get item here again, the static mesh, and out of that we want to get the relative rotation. Out of this, we want to go into a combine rotators. And a combine rotators is essentially just an addition because you can't have a rotator plus a rotator, it's instead called a combine rotators. And B, we want to right click and split the structure pin, and we want to mess about with the X or the roll, because again, that is left and right. And very simply, we can come at the axis value of the mouse X, because that's how much we are moving our mouse on the X. We can then get a multiply. So a float multiplied by a float, and that will go into the X or the roll there, because we're going to be rotating on the X, dependent on how much we've moved our mouse on the X as well. And I'm going to multiply this by minus one, as that gave me good sensitivity. So it's minus because otherwise it's inverted, so putting it as a minus just reinverts it back to normal so when you move right it goes right and I've got mine as minus one because that seemed like a good sensitivity. The higher the number or technically lower but if you go up to minus five that's then faster so it's higher sensitivity. So again customize that to be whatever you like but I found minus one was a good value for me but again change it to get it perfect for you. And then very simply the return value of the combined rotators goes into the new rotation of the set relative rotation there and now we've got it working perfectly to rotate on the X, depending on how much we move our mouse while holding down the left or right mouse button. And as you can imagine, moving on the Y is incredibly simple and very similar. So what I'm going to do is in fact just select all of these. So select the branch and the rotation combine and all that good stuff and hit control C and control V to paste it down here. And then what I'm simply going to do is when we have mouse X, I'm going to right click and get mouse Y. So I'm moving it up and down instead connecting that into the branch, the axis value going back into that multiplication down there, and the multiplication going into the Y pitch instead of the X roll. And again, the condition of the branch is gonna be that OR Boolean that we have up there. And I might in fact just move this so it looks more centralized. 
just to keep it looking a bit neat and tidier and also add these root nodes by double clicking again just to keep it looking nice and tidy but i think that'll be it done because this is all the code we need to do very simply we've got it so we can start and stop inspecting this item so we're basically controlling this blueprint instead of the character and we've also got it so when we move our mouse on the x or y so left and right or up and down and we are holding left or right mouse button it's just going to simply rotate this item in here perfectly how much we want dependent on the movement of the x-axis and y-axis of our mouse and again this multiplication here is the sensitivity so let's hit play and test this out we go in press e to interact with it if i'm holding left mouse button we can move it left and right up and down and if i hold right mouse button we can do that as well so that works perfectly and if i'm not holding anything and moving nothing happens if i press e again it then gets placed down and if you want to create multiple items because this is a parent what we can do is right click the blueprint and then create child blueprint class and i won't give it a name and then you can drag that in there and it will work the same and if you want to change how it looks you can double click to open it up and you can see we now have the static mesh in here because it's a child so it's inherited that there as you can see inherited so what we can do is select the item there and then just change the static mesh to be let's say a cube or whatever you like and then i'm just going to scale it down a bit as well i think that'll be good making sure it's also on the bottom is in the middle like that again so it works better when placing it down and again i've already dragged it in so we can now hit play go over to this and we can also inspect this one again it's a little big but you can just change the scale of it so i think that'll be it for this video so we've done everything we want to do we've set it up so we can pick up and put down our items and we can use this on multiple items as well and once we pick them up we can also rotate them and interact with them however we want to and this works perfectly again you can easily adapt upon this and add more to this and i also think this will be the end of this mini series it's just two parts to get this done so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one